prison, he is still viewed by police as the leader of the state's largest and most dangerous street gang. Joni Lum is here with the latest on today's raid. Joni? Sonia and Dave, authorities believe Larry Hoover is running an enormous gang operation from inside the Dixon Correctional Center where he is housed. Good day, family, and welcome back to my channel, The Mysterious Black Bandit. If you guys don't mind, please hit that subscribe, like, and turn the notification bell on to receive all new content. In today's video, we'll be talking about one of Chicago's biggest gangsters since Al Capone, Larry Hoover. Larry Hoover, also known as King Larry, was born on November 30th, 1950 in Jackson, Mississippi. He lived in a crowded household filled with his grandparents, parents, and four other siblings. At the age of four, his parents moved the family to Inglewood, a section north of Chicago, Illinois, in search of a better life. But this decision probably wasn't the best for young Larry Hoover. Eight years later, at the age of 12, Larry began his lifelong career as a gangster. He took to the streets and started clubbing and hanging out with local kids who called themselves the Supreme Gangsters. This gang of young men engaged in petty crimes such as theft and muggings in the poor areas. Over the years, when the Supremes grew in size, their criminal activity evolved into shootings and assaults. Hoover was said to be a natural leader, so when the leadership role presented itself, he quickly ascended to power and became a kingpin. In the mid-1960s, the Supreme Gangsters and another gang called the Black Disciples were heavily at war regularly. The violence between these two gangs were endangering the survival of Chicago's African-American communities. So Hoover decided to forge an alliance with David Barstow, the leader of the Black Disciples, in order to reduce the frequent gang wars. David Barstow, known as King David, founded the gang called the Black Disciples, or what some may call Devil's Disciples. He too was born in Mississippi and migrated to Chicago. It was said that just three years being there, Barstow turned to the streets. After their agreement, Hoover changed the name of their gang to the Black Gangster Disciple Nation, which Hoover and Barksdale ran alternatively. With these two gangs merging, they would considerably become more powerful than all the other gangs there. They started raging violence against other organizations and sometimes people who were not even affiliated with Chicago gangs or gang life just to generate more respect and fear. In 1968, King David was leaving out of a bar and was shot six times, wounding him severely. So Hoover took full control over the GDs, or Gangster Disciples. Reports state that the gang assumed control over the South Side drug trade and was making over $1,000 in profit a day. By the time Hoover had reached his early 20s, he had been in and out of prison several times and had survived six separate shooting attempts on his life. However, he was unable to escape the reach of the law when he and another gang member whose name is Andrew Howard would be charged with murdering William Pookie Young on February 26, 1973. Young was a 19-year-old neighborhood drug dealer who was accused of stealing money and drugs from the gang six days earlier. A witness who was allegedly part of the Gangster Disciples stated that Larry Hoover ordered Howard to kill him. And Later that night, Howard abducted Pookie and took him into an alley near 68th Street and Union Avenue in Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood, then shot him six times in the head and once in the arm, killing him. So they both were sentenced to 150 to 200 years in prison, with Hoover being sent to a maximum security state vehicle center in Crest Hill, Illinois. But this didn't stop Hoover at all. He continued to run his illicit activities behind bars. In fact, he became the prime mover behind the gang following the death of Barksdale in 1972 due to kidney failure. Hoover held the reins of the gang's drug trade in the South and also had full control of a drug dealer near Chicago's West Side. As the years went on, the Gangster Disciples extended throughout the United States. Hoover has helped form several other gangs like Folk Nation, which added other gangs such as Black Disciples, Gangster Disciples, Maniac Latino Disciples, and Spanish Gangster Disciples. His powers had grew tremendously. Since he has been in prison, he began protecting other inmates who in turn became devoted new recruits for the Gangster Disciples. Even the warden of the prison had recognized the influence and control he had over other prisoners and started to look to Hoover to curb riots and uprisings within the prison system. Now, it was also stated that Hoover was quite academically inclined for a criminal. Despite being a grade school dropout, Hoover earned his GED and an emergency medical technician license while incarcerated. By the early 1990s, Larry Hoover claimed to have renounced his violent criminal past and became an urban political figure in Chicago. Hoover claimed that the letters GD now meant growth and development. He started discouraging violence among his followers and made education mandatory. He also instructed his army to go to school, learn trades, and develop talents and skills so that they could become a stronger society. 
The GD gang started to earn fans throughout the community by holding charity events and having peaceful protests to fight the closing of public programs and even clothing lines. From the inside, Hoover started to gain positive recognition from the community on the outside. The new reformed GDs or Growth and Development Gang created a non-profit organization that helped register voters and a music label that helped needy children. However, prison officials stated that Hoover's good intentions under Growth and Development was just a ploy to get him out of prison and to continue his immoral activities. Investigations led to find that Hoover's gang allegedly had over 30,000 foot soldiers in 35 states and was making over $100 million a year. This certainly raised suspicion, and authorities began wiretapping Hoover's private meetings. An inside informant revealed that none of Hoover's proceeds from his nonprofit organizations or so called charities actually went to help anyone in need. They were actually just fronts for laundering all the drug money. On August 31, 1995, Hoover was indicted for drug conspiracy, extortion, and continued to engage in criminal enterprise. Afterwards, he was taken by federal agents and was moved to the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Chicago to stand trial. In 1997, Larry Hoover was found guilty on all charges and was sent to the United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximal Facility in Florence, Colorado to serve his six life sentences. This facility is considered one of the most psychologically punishing correctional centers in the world. Larry Hoover will be 72 years old this year and has been locked up for over five decades for his crimes and gang affiliation. In the year 2000, Hoover appealed his case to either be freed or to be put in a lower security prison under the First Step Act, which intended to do two things, cut unnecessary long federal sentences and improve conditions in the federal prisons. In his appeal case, the court was told that he had been under severe isolation in jail, including being in solitary confinement for up to 24 hours a day. But the judge rejected his appeal, referring to him as one of the most notorious criminals in Illinois history. The judge felt that Hoover's sentence in the Supermax prison was particularly grim, but he was concerned about an active risk of harm if he was released. He stated that Hoover is renowned and celebrated to this day by the GDs, to the extent that any one person can deter another to commit crimes. And Hoover's life imprisonment symbolically demonstrates that the rule of law reaches even those in power that seem untouchable. In 2021, his son, Larry Hoover Jr., called on rapper Drake and Kanye West, who were at odds at the time, to set aside their issues and come together to help free his father. Rapper Kanye West was raised in Chicago and has been a supporter of Larry Hoover for a while. So the two rappers dropped their differences and put together a free Larry Hoover concert that was held in Los Angeles, California to raise awareness and hopefully free his father. Larry Hoover Jr. stated in an interview that his father was aware of his plans but was slightly worried about the show because he doesn't know how it will affect him. Bringing two of the world's biggest artists together to free him shows that he still has a big influence and although it isn't negative, it can be taken that way. But his son convinced him to allow it and in December 2021, the Benefits concert took place and was sold out. A few days later, reports state that the fans were surprised and upset by the decision two megastars would deport a convicted criminal who they said was the worst of the worst. Larry Hoover was considered to be one of Chicago's biggest gangsters since Al Capone, and some say that he is responsible for the highest murder rate the city has ever seen. His drug network that was precise and efficient controlled neighborhoods, street corners, and parks, which made it nearly impossible for children to even go outside, let alone go outside and play. To this day, Larry Hoover remains in a supermax prison on a 23-hour lockdown. Hoover was truly a very influential and smart man. He brought together tens of thousands of young men to form a bond to work together, get educated, and learn trade. He knew that knowledge is power, and coming together as one big group could definitely create positive change. All right, family, I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you all for watching, and please smash that like and subscribe button for your boy. Also, comment down in the bottom and let me know what you think of Mr. Hoover. Do you think he should be freed, or does he need to stay in prison? That is it for now, and until next time, stay mysterious, my friends.